Jeff McGovern in the news this week. In London, at a matinee performance of Magic Mike XXL, dancers report being put off by two women on a leaving do in the front row. <laughs> morning in Yorkshire, a man reacts badly to the news they've run out of custard creams. <laughs> and at the end of a tough few days in Westminster, Jeremy Hunt celebrates keeping his job as Chancellor with a relaxing evening at his local TGI Fridays. <laughs> Ian's team tonight is a mathematician who presented an episode of Horizon entitled 10 Things You Need to Know About the Future. Thanks, but I think at the moment we'll just try and get through one day at a time. Please welcome Professor Hannah Fry! <laughs> Tonight is a Scottish comedian who is blind, which means that he's just about the only person in Glasgow who you can't greet with the words, see you, Jimmy. <laughs> Please welcome Jimmy McDonald. <laughs> so we begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Ian and Hannah, take a look at this. Oh, that's Liz Truss leaving. She's very happy. Mm. <laughs> Not as happy as ours. <laughs> this week's Prime Minister? Yep, five minutes I've got. Oh, <laughs> oh Jacob rees no entry. We're not even thinking about it. <laughs> Rishi there's just heard that Boris's interior design is free. <laughs> Quite a visual short. Yes, it's visual, isn't it? <laughs> so we've got another Prime Minister. Yeah. And I think this programme goes out in time for that to be an accurate statement. <laughs> Nice change for us. I noticed that you know the Queen, the longest reign in monarch, coincided with the shortest Prime Minister term. And if every Prime Minister under the Queen had lasted the same length of time as Liz Truss, she would have had 560 Prime Ministers. <laughs> how enthusiastically he thanks all those people who mean so much to him and Matt Hancock. <laughs> what a snob. Yeah, I think Matt Hancock was expecting a grope at least. <laughs> Another PM that's been to Oxford. Him, Oxford, Liz Truss, Oxford. Yeah. Boris Johnson, Oxford. David Cameron, Oxford. What are you saying? Well, I mean, what is it about Oxford that produces an endless list of bozos <laughs> coming from? <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear how Keir Starmer greeted him? He congratulated him, didn't he? Yeah, he said in Rishi Sunak's first Prime Minister's Question Time, the only time he ran in a competitive election, he got trounced by the former Prime Minister, <laughs> who herself got beaten by a lettuce. I think wonder if that lettuce is still going. I think they should do a winner stays on with Rishi. Yeah. <laughs> and trust must be off salads for life. <laughs> <laughs> How did Rishi Sunak try to distance himself from Liz Truss? By saying that uh, there were lots of mistakes that they made and he was going to fix them? Yeah, he said he was here to fix her well-intentioned mistakes. And one of the first He's things... just taking the... Sorry. <laughs> and one of the first things he did was show some respect to Scotland. He rang Nicola Sturgeon and he said, Hello, is that Nicola? You're not getting a referendum. <laughs> What did you think, by the way, because obviously Rishi rang Nicola Sturgeon, Liz Truss didn't. I don't know if Liz knew how to use a phone. <laughs> I mean, she was only in office for like 45 days, right? Which isn't even enough time to get a broadband appointment. So <laughs> I strongly suspect that the reason that she was doing all of this because she just didn't have any internet access to the news. <laughs> She's quite a lot different from Liz Truss, although they apparently share the same programmer. Have a look at this. And I will work day in, day out to deliver for the British people. <laughs> <laughs> what did Rishi Sunak?
Sunak entered Downing Street without? A mandate. <laughs> Johnson did that <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> Is it because uh, he tried to explain to her what a flat was? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> he also went in without his personal lectern, because obviously, uh, you know, each Prime Minister gets a lectern and he didn't have time to have one designed for him, like Liz Truss's Jenga themed oh. one, which kind of represents her uh, tenure, doesn't it? Yeah. I might, I, an unstruck, you know. It is fabulous, isn't it? Events spiralling out of control. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think when Liz Truss plays Jenga, she just goes and smashes the tower <laughs> and then says, look, mistakes were made, I own them. <laughs> By the way, normally ex-prime ministers can look forward to a career of sort of making big speeches and being paid lots of money uh, to do this and travel around America. And uh, is, this, is she going to get the same deals, do you think? No. <laughs> I think there are a lot of rotary clubs. <laughs> it could be quite a wee memoir. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On my hours in the yeah. <laughs> the Disastrous. Boris bounce back didn't happen. Why did he withdraw if he had enough MPs to nominate him? I thought you were going to cut us as why didn't he withdraw? <laughs> <laughs> he interrupted a holiday in the Caribbean to come back to announce this wasn't the right time for him to be Prime Minister. <laughs> but I reckon he was given a preview of what this um, inquiry is going to say about him oh, in right. Parliament. Yeah, I've had a preview of it. It's was Boris guilty? And the answer is yeah. <laughs> Laughing about it. It was a BBC presenter, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Taken off the air for being gleeful about yes. it. <laughs> I think gleeful is actually quite a balanced response. Ecstatic is <laughs> <laughs> sort of the correct response. Uh, yeah, the BBC's Martin Croxall on the late night BBC newspaper review. He assures not long after the news of Boris's withdrawal broke. Well, this is all very exciting, isn't it? Hello and welcome to our look ahead to what the papers will be bringing us tomorrow. Am I allowed to be this gleeful? Well, I am. <laughs>
Welcome to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Coming up on tonight's program, for a change, a man who is going to clear up a woman's mess. That's Rishi Spowers, the entrance number 10. As, as you were, soon as stability extends to the cabinet with the big beef steak and all the cages that front them and front at home in the home office. Sorry, I'm just completely messed up. <laughs> at least she's a better presenter than she is a politician. <laughs> Prime Minister. He is Rishi outside the door of number 10. Not only is he the first British Asian Prime Minister, he's the first that can go in through the cat flap. <laughs> Jacob Rees Mogg dated his resignation letter, St. Crispin's Day, <laughs> which is apt because St. Crispin is the patron saint of cobblers. <laughs> Jamie, what's going on here? Uh, shall I describe what's happening? I can have a guess. Yeah. Hang on, there's a Vladimir Putin on China. That's the yeah, it's, 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 it's both. But I'll give you a clue. It's about the Ford Fiesta not being produced anymore. <laughs> oh, Xi Jinping just bought one. Yeah, he said Ford. Yeah, the Ford Fiesta is no longer being produced. Yeah. yeah, this is the news that after 46 years, Ford are scrapping the Fiesta. Who's really upset about it? The Ford Fiesta Appreciation Club. <laughs> the FFAP. <laughs> the RNIB. Yeah. Yeah, not far off. The Sun's motoring correspondent, Rob Gill, uh, yeah. was particularly upset. Was he? He, yeah, he wrote this in an article. Like many of you, my first car was a Fiesta. It was the first car where I folded the seats flat. If you know what I mean. Maybe he meant more like this. A car that's easier to park and a pleasant airy interior. The somewhere for odds and ends, somewhere for maps and books. And with the back seat folded down, even somewhere for the kitchen sink. Uh, why is the Fiesta being scrapped? It's no good. <laughs> It's an awful car. People have grown... The baby has grown up. <laughs> and has disappointed everybody by becoming a rather awkward adult. No. No. <laughs> uh, it's cost and the fact that people don't want to drive small cars anymore. Don't they? Yeah. Does anyone else think cars are too wide? Yeah. Yeah. Watford Council do as well. Oh, don't listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> they had to uh, widen a traffic calming bollard recently after drivers struggled to get through it. Have a look. <laughs> oh, no. Car, cars continually hitting the same. Uh, <laughs> and that's what was a police car. <laughs> Who's this, and what did he have to say about the Ford Fiesta this week? Um, Vladimir Putin. Yeah, Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Come on. Come on. That's George Williams. It's Nick Mills. Oh. Ah, <laughs> yeah, the well-known George Williams lookalike. <laughs> yeah, it's Nick Mills, and according to The Sun, he's yeah. the UK's premier Fiesta expert, oh, no. yeah. who goes by the name... Yeah. Mr Fiesta. <laughs> He said this week. <laughs> uh, Sky News described the Fiesta as a British icon, but just how British is it? Fiesta is a Spanish word, isn't it? Yeah. Ford's an American word. It's an American yeah. Spanish car. The chair was invented in China. Yeah. <laughs> revealed it was invented in america yeah. it's made in germany and it's got a spanish name yeah, yeah. although i thought it was named after a porn mag <laughs> <laughs> i thought i recognized your face <laughs> it wasn't that face you were looking at was it <laughs> trying to be polite <laughs> In which TV show is the Fiesta most famous oh, for sure? Oh, only Fools and Horses? No. No? Do a documentary about Nick Mills? No. Uh, as Rob Gill revealed, it yeah. was one surprise on Bullseye. <laughs> Let's take a look. 
bagpipes? Go for 15 minutes at 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> what unfortunate incident befell one of Charles's royal stand-ins this week? Oh, is this the Madame Tussaud story? Yes. King Charles's waxwork in Madame Tussauds was targeted by climate change protesters. Let's have a look. The time for words has moved to the time for action.
as President Xi tightened his grip on power in China, The Telegraph reported, stocks plunge on fears for Chinese economy. I assume that was following a statement from his new finance minister, Kwa Si Kwa Teng. <laughs> How has congressional hopeful for New York's 12th district, Mike Itkus, been trying to make himself stand out as a candidate? Shave his head. He's <laughs> <laughs> been wrestling alligators at the zoo. It's not far off, like you know. It's not far off, he's yeah. wrestling an alligator. Yeah. He's a crocodile. <laughs> yeah. <he's... laughs> oh, I know this one. I know this one. Go on. He's uploaded his own sex video yeah. to the internet. <laughs> There's like a photo of, I've just seen a still from the very beginning of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't Here we go it on, that, on that thumbnail, believe me. It's the one way to spoil a ballot. <laughs> In order to highlight his sex positive approach, yeah. he has deliberately released a sex tear. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, well, oh, the alligator bit wasn't the close no. bit. The rest of it was a shame. <laughs> Distracted by the sound of paper burning. Some of that or crisps. Oh, you think it's crisps? No. Oh, yeah, I can hear that rustling as well. <laughs> Someone's got a bag of Maltesers in their pocket. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> an audio round. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I have 
been approached. <laughs> Why did Macbeth lose his friends? Well, he, he murdered Duncan, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he got rid of them all as a synopsis of the play reveals that Macbeth kills the king, becomes the new king, and kills more people out of a paranoia before civil war erupts to overthrow him. Like a conservative party leadership company. <laughs> uh, yeah, they've all lost friends except Boris Becker, who's said to be making friends by teaching yoga to fellow inmates. Uh, Macbeth has given us many memorable lines, including... When shall we three meet again? Most recently seen in a WhatsApp group of Boris Johnson supporters. <laughs> Ian and Anna, your four are John Major, Bono, William Haig and Heston Blumenthal. John Major's pretty upset about how he's being represented in The Crown. This is a new line-up of you two that got together for Glastonbury. They <laughs> should have be called you four. <laughs> are there four of them? I think so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's history, and then I don't know. Does Heston did like food of the past, like oranges that were made of meat and stuff? No, well, that, this is the answer. Then they've all objected to versions of history involving them, except Heston, who makes meat out of oranges. <laughs> yeah, that's our answer. That's our answer. Yeah, it's good, but it's not nice. <laughs> okay, give us a clue. Uh, the clue: they don't want to look back. Oh. I've forgotten. Yeah, we've got nothing. <laughs> John Major, Bono, William Haig and Heston Blumenthal. Right. John Major objected. He did object to the retelling in The Crown. Yeah. Yes. Because The Crown said that Charles was actively trying to get yeah. John Major in a plot to force the Queen to abdicate, which is nonsense. John Major was very, very busy during his premiership with other things. Edwina Curry. <laughs> is, is Edwina Curry one of Heston's dishes? <laughs> up again the other day. Did she? Yeah, she just got nothing curry. <laughs> but what did she say? Uh, she said, oh, that's your major, I've had him. <laughs> <laughs> that was more of it. What, hey, what's Haig objecting to? Speaking at the Tory party conference when he was really young. He said, I, I regret appearing as a teenager at the Tory conference because people thought I looked like a weirdo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And does, uh, did Bono regret the, the iPod? <laughs> Not no, that, he regretted the, the mullet. Yeah. Yes. He regretted yeah. being on, was it Live Aid? Yeah. Wearing a mullet made by Heston Blumenthal. Uh, <laughs> it was fashionable at the time, I suppose. What, 1730? Yeah. <laughs> because all of the others regret something they did and yeah. John Major doesn't like something that didn't happen. Correct. Oh, you are yeah. pretty. Yes. Yeah. They all regret something from early in their career apart from John Major who's unhappy with his portrayal in The Crown. What regret does celebrity chef Heston Blumenthal have about his cooking? Mm. That Mikey Porridge thing. The chef famous for creating elaborate, unique culinary delights told The Guardian that he regrets making things too complicated. Although he might not have learned his lesson because a recent Times recipe for a Blumenthal bacon sandwich had six steps to it, including the key stage, butter, two bread slices. <laughs> uh, what did he say was the most accurate film about a three-star Michelin restaurant? Ratatouille. <laughs> he said it was Ratatouille. <laughs> uh, Hessen also revealed he has a superpower. What is it? Is it making fruit out of me? <laughs> He told The Guardian, I can tell the temperature of a room within half a degree between 18 and 24 degrees Celsius by what my head is doing. Adding, I'm head thermometer man. Because <laughs> <laughs> it starts spinning on its axis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <Three> <laughs> <laughs> yes, they all regret something from early in their career, apart from John Major, who is unhappy with his portrayal in The Crown. John Major has got a lot of questions he wants to put to the producers of The Crown, the main one being, who's playing Edwina Curry? <laughs>
Bono has revealed that 20 years ago, former Russian leader Mikhail Gorbachev visited his home in Dublin. Now, if you want some idea of how extraordinary an event that was, imagine Vladimir Putin popping in to see Jedward. <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words Round, which this week features as its guest publication, Beer, the quarterly magazine of the Campaign for Real Ale, or as the magazine's subscribers call it, the usual. <laughs> start with, we would like to apologise to our members for failing to what? We would like to apologise to our members for failing to apologise to our members in the last issue, which was the apology issue, but unfortunately the print has missed out the word apology, so the word apology didn't appear, but we would like to apologise to our members for failing to do that. <laughs> we would like to apologise to our members for failing to list every single real ale event happening in Britain. There simply isn't enough space in the magazine for them, but if you visit our website, they'll be listed there, unless you don't have a computer. In which case, we apologise again. It would have been some time before we guessed that, wouldn't it? <laughs> the term real ale event covers a lot of things, from sampling some local ales at a Dorset festival, to your mate Terry soiling himself in a weather spoon. <laughs> I'm suggesting that Ian has a mate called Terry. <laughs> yeah, me and him down spoons. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been in one? Of course I have. What sort of person do you think Ian is? Have you ever had a fry up? <laughs> Fine then with 
the clothes on. <laughs> Britain's dullest man sells calendars featuring his favourite car parks. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, this is a car park representing the month of March. Oh, yeah. Now, I would show you April, but unfortunately the photo was taken at the peak of the dogging season. Here's another question for Ian. <laughs>